Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Slightly different day this week. We're on a Friday, um, but it's a sunny Friday down in Bournemouth where the office is, and it's another Sammy Wiz session. These sessions are um, really enjoyable. We've got them going week after week, um, and we're getting more and more interesting and exciting people on, and experts, and everything that's really, really helping people out there that are working with us. So it's good to have you all uh, joining us, and it's good to have people people coming to give up their valuable time to support us. So this week we have Jane who's joined us and I'm going to let Jane introduce herself in a moment and tell you a little bit more about her. Um, but Jane is coming to talk a little bit more about accountancy and all those kind of things because we know people have been asking for this. Um, so Jane, good morning and thank you very, very much for your time and joining us. How are you today? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me and hello, everybody. Wonderful, thank you. And we've got a couple of people already in. So Lorraine has said good morning all. So Lorraine's on with us. Um, Sam and Wayne are in the office this morning on email. So Sam and Wayne have said good morning as well. So they're in with us. And there's a few more people that are coming on board. So it's good to see. So if you're joining us, say good morning, say hi, let us know if you've got comments or questions. Michael, good morning. Hope you're well. Um, if you've got comments or questions, as you know, by now with the Sammy Wiz sessions, you can pop them in. Sharon Adams has said good morning all. So Sharon's on with us as well, which is great. So we've got quite a few people starting to join in now, which is amazing. That's good to see. Um, Martin Brown has joined us. He was on a couple of weeks ago with Martin um, uh, with uh, marketing. Um, so he's joined us um, and he says, hi, Jane and Ricky. So we've got quite a few people that have already joined us, Jane. So I think mm -hmm. we're good to get going. Um, so as I've said, thank you for your time. And Jane is part of Jane Ellis Accountants, which I've just put the website up, janeellisaccountants.co.uk. Um, and if you have any questions following on from this or you need a little bit more information about how Jane might be able to support you with um, bookkeeping accounts, tax, that kind of that kind of area, then um, you can drop her through a quick email and ask her a question and she can she can discuss with you how she can move forward and support you and support your business. Um, also, if you've got any comments or questions and you can't put them into the Facebook Live, you can email sam at sammy.co.uk. Um, and pop them through there. And if you're watching it on replay, you can also use my email and we can get the questions answered afterwards. OK, so I think that's covered all the formalities um, and I think let's um, step into it. So, Jane, um, it is really, really great to have you with us and have you supporting us today with a topic that I think when anyone starts working for themselves, it's the biggest question and concern is about tax and um, and accountancy and dealing with dealing with the tax per people um, up at HMRC. So thank you for giving your time. And I just want to start off by asking you, can you just give people a bit of your background and tell people a bit about yourself and introduce yourself? Yeah, so hi everyone again, I'm Jane, um, Jane Ellis Accountant. So I work on my own at the moment, got my own um, accountancy practice. So um, basically I left school I'm really sure what I wanted to do. I started off working in a bank on a management training program. Um, and uh, luckily, in hindsight, I got made redundant from there. Then I sold house insurance for a while, which was just so boring. Um, and then I thought, right, I need to do something sort of good with my life. So um, I thought I would try and get an accountancy training contract. So um, I got that, started with a local firm in Wimborne, stayed there for sort of three or four years moved to another large firm in uh, Bournemouth, trained there, um, and that's where I qualified. Um, and then a couple of years after that, I left. Um, I went off on maternity leave and had my children. Um, and then sort of during that time, I kind of worked various part-time jobs. I've done quite a bit of work for some other accountants. Um, and I've worked in industry. I worked for a company that made um, big fire alarm systems for sort of big blocks of flats, worked there for quite a while. Um, and I worked for some manufacturing, that sort of thing. Um, and then sort of towards the end of last year, I thought, right, I'm going to get my practicing certificate, which is like an additional license, which means you can set up on your own. So I did that last year. Um, and so, I, yeah, that's I've just sort of set up last year, like I say, gathering clients. It's going pretty well. But so I love working for myself. It's just so much nicer. So, 
yeah that's me <laughs> brilliant thank you thank you and that's that's given a good introduction to to everyone so like we said this week you know what the um, subject is and if you have questions please do pop them in the comments. But as you know by now with this, we do have a list of the common questions that we tend to get that we start moving forward with. And I think we've kind of covered this a little bit, your your career path into accounts, but what, what do you think made you choose this as a career? What was it about accounts that stood out for you as a career choice? Um, I think, I, I mean, I like it because no day is different. To every single client you deal with is different. You can have five limited companies and they've all got a little quirk about them or um, everybody needs something different or people's personalities are different. You know, some people need a lot yeah. of hand holding. I, I think it's just nice. It's just say everything's different and you can get ones that run straight through all nice and smooth and it's really easy. And others, you are literally tearing your hair out trying to get things to work. But when it does work, you're like, yay, you know, the satisfaction. So. I, I just like it. It's just different. I meet so many nice people and I've met so many interesting people as well. You know, people that that do things for a living. And you say, yeah. wow, you know, I never would have even thought that was a job. And they're yeah. very successful about it. It's brilliant. So, yeah, I just I love it. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. That's good to hear. Um, and so working in accounting, it sounded like you had a very successful career, everything was going really, really well. So what made you decide to start your own accountancy business? What was it about working for yourself? I think it was more, um, say I was doing the last couple of years, I've done quite a lot of subcontract work for other accountants. Um, and they've tended to be on the whole bigger ones, you know, based in, you know, centre of town and big offices and big overheads and that. Um, and I was finding with a lot of the jobs, you know, they would give the client a fee and they'd say to me, right, you've got five hours to do the job. And it, it was a bit like it was like a production line. It was like, hurry up, hurry up, you know, all the time. And so you were literally rushing it through and you couldn't spend any time with the client. You couldn't sort of, you know, now I, if, if I see somebody doing something wrong, I can take an hour with them and say, mm -hmm. you know, do your bookkeeping slightly differently like this. And then next year it will be perfect for me. But you know, you could never really in the big firms, you could never get to really get to know your client or yeah. sort of get to talk to them. So um, I, I just like that. And say so a lot of my clients have sort of become friends now as well, which is really nice over the years. So um, that that's really why I did it. So, and obviously, Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's, it's nice when you have that bit more time to actually sit down and understand um, an individual and where you can best support them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I see everybody's different. Some people need a lot of support. Other people don't really want to talk to me unless it's the year end and they just want to know how much tax they pay. But it's nice you get a mixture of all sort of people. So Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. And um and I, I would imagine you get you get your accounts all in sorts of different ways and, and a mixture of things, which we'll probably come on to um a bit later anyway. But why do you believe it's important to use an accountant for your tax return? Well, I think um, one thing to say, um, and most people don't realise this, is anybody can call themselves an accountant. So if you get a, a doctor or a lawyer, you've got to have the qualifications to do that. But an accountant, anyone can call themselves an accountant. So um, I think, one, it's important to use an accountant, which I'll come on to in a second, but I think it's also important to get a proper qualified accountant um because we've got obviously we've done a lot of exams you know we're accountable to our bodies we've got insurance not not our body sorry the accountancy body that sounded odd <laughs> but um yeah, we're accountable to the accountancy bodies um we've got to do ongoing training we've got to have insurance um you know and some of the you know i've seen people that have sort of done a two-week online course and call themselves an accountant and it's you know that's one thing i think um, but also, I've you know, people, I think people can do their own accounts and, and tax and a lot of people do it OK. But I think if you go to an accountant, they know the little quirks. They know things that you can claim for that perhaps other people wouldn't think of or just simply things like timing of, of buying your asset. Right. You know, when's the best time to buy it for tax reasons? Just little things like that that we can perhaps add that, you know, normally people wouldn't know about. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And um I think that covered that that really well. And if anyone has 
questions that they want to ask like we said um introduce your questions anything about accounts you can you can check them on here obviously if it's something that's more related to you specifically we might ask that we come back to that but if you've got general accounting questions or you're getting some value from this you want to let us know what your takeaways are then absolutely pop your comments into the box um and let us know what you're taking away and what your questions are so i think we've talked a little bit about what the advantages are and why it's important to use the accountant and how like you said you you kind of know the the quirks and i i think it was uh, what you what you pointed out there about qualified accountant as well was was quite a good thing to to bring people's awareness to so you mentioned about what you like is that you can kind of work with people now a little bit more and say, well, if you do it this way, actually, it's going to make the next year easier. What would you say is the best way to keep records for tax during the year? Um, I think there's, there's no kind of one size fits all, you know, way of doing it. I think the most important thing is, is to be organized, um, find out what, what you need to keep and how you need to keep it. And, keep on top of it because um you know one from an accountant's point of view at the year end a, a, a set of good records is so quick to deal with compared to a set of bad records <laughs> um you know if if the revenue ever look into you you know they want to know something or will query something and you've got a good set of records it sits a lot better mm. you know than a sort of a mess <laughs> um so i think you know f find out what you need to do and stay on top of it um, I mean, some people can keep it. So it, dep it depends on your business, but um, if you're VAT registered, you need to keep all of your um, records on a, a software, an accountancy software, so that you can submit your VAT returns through to the revenue. Um, if you're not VAT registered, some sort of small people, you know, with a couple of invoices each way each month, they can keep their records on, it, on Excel, which is perfectly fine. Um, you know, there's a lot of good accountancy software packages out there ranging from you know sort of probably five pound a month upwards depending on what you need um there's things like there's another software out there called receipt bank which is really clever you basically so if you went into say tesco and bought some petrol you literally take a photo of this receipt with your phone send it off to receipt bank it sends it into your accountancy software and it recognizes that you've been to tesco and it's a petrol receipt and it pre-populates all the um boxes in your software and all you've got to do is say all you've got to do, but you've got to go through and um, just agree that that it's read it right. And that is a petrol receipt. So it's quite clever. There's a lot of really good things out there, you know, depending on what you need. Brilliant. And um, the team have just brought up the website for us for Receipt Bank as well. So anyone that wants to know about that, there's the uh, website for ReceiptBank.com. Yeah, so or there's quite a few, depending on which software you use, other softwares mm -hmm. use, you know, use other ones, but most of them do something very similar to that. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, Chris has joined us now as well, so he's saying good morning. So good morning, Chris. Um, Lorraine has actually um, brought in a question as well. So she said that she gets a bit confused about how an accountant, HMRC and myself interact. Could you clear some of the fog away? So, mm -hmm. so she's a bit confused with how it all works. Can you kind of it's iron that out for her yeah so what 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 you do is um if people that don't use an accountant they can submit their accounts and their tax um straight through to the revenue to hmrc and then any queries or, or anything at all hmrc will come straight back to them but if you use somebody like an accountant or someone like myself um we can sit in the middle so um any letters or anything that that the revenue would send out to the client I'll get a copy as well and I would deal with it. Um, any queries I can deal with, you know, if you had a, an investigation, if they pick something out on your tax return they didn't like, I could deal with that um, for them. So the client still gets copied in so they know what's going on. Um, but but say we can deal with the revenue. So all that is is a matter of when you take a new client on, you just get authorization. Um, Basically, you just, you just register on the website, the revenue, send the client a code, I put this code in, and then they'll talk to me about absolutely anything. So it's, um, you know, a lot of people don't like talking to the revenue and they prefer me to do it. So so I can do it for them. So Excellent, excellent. So you can have those awkward co conversations with HMRC that people don't <laughs> like to have. Yeah. That's, that's 
thought it would be worth its weight in gold, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so Chris Walton has just said that he uses um, something called Wave, which is really good and free options for small business. Have you heard of Wave? I've not used that one, actually, no. It's an interesting one. So we'll have to look up that one. So thank you for that tip, Chris, um, and bringing that forward to us. Um, so let's just have a look. So that's kind of covered about keeping answer to kind of where people sit hopefully that covered uh cleared the fog a little bit away for lorraine um what sort of things should people record or can they include when claiming their expenses and completing their tax returns so um yeah so basically there's some um, sort of a, a general sort of expenses um so anything you buy for your business so materials or anything you buy to resell um you know, staff costs, wages, that sort of thing. Um, bank charges, you can, if you have premises, you know, heat, light, water, advertising, training, all of that sort of thing. Um, if, if anybody wanted to have a look, if you go to the HM, HMRC website, um, I think it's under expenses for self-employed. There's quite a sort of a good list on there um, of what you can claim. The only thing I find people tend to miss a little bit is like with motor expenses I quite mm -hmm. often find I'll get to the end of the year and I'll say to them how many miles have you driven and they'll be like oh I don't know so I'd say sort of for anyone that's self-employed just keep a simple mileage log you know the date where you went to and where you ended up and how many miles you drove and then you know at the end of the year it's so easy then to claim for the mileage brilliant brilliant and i think some of the um some of the packages that are out there now with um keeping your um uh records digital with the account side of things some of them actually will record mileage and stuff when they're on the phones as well won't they so yes. it kind of saves you a bit of time and thinking about it yeah. lorraine has said um uh oh got the wrong one up there thanks you are much less scary than hmrc <laughs> so <laughs> uh, martin has just clarified about um using wave for invoices and payments via credit card so it sounds like this is definitely wave is something we're going to have to explore i think mm -hmm. um sam and, and and wayne have just popped up the email uh, the website for um government uk expenses self-employed so we've got that and there's also um simpler income tax simplified as well so we've got that link up there as well so that's brilliant so we've got some good links up there any more questions people have got coming through um what would you say are the common mistakes that you've seen new businesses and self-employed people make when it comes to taxes and accounts i think the, the one i find the most is um you know people will have a conversation with bob down the pub and sort of you know go on his advice so they'll mm. come to me and they'll say, I've set up a limited company and I've been trading for six months. And, and I'll sort of say, OK, why did you go limited? And, they'll, you know, they'll say, oh, my friend down the pub told me or so and so at work told me. And it's whereas it's OK, they're not doing anything wrong. I sort of think if you'd have said, you know, ask me six months earlier, it's possibly not the most tax efficient way for you to trade. So I find yeah. you tend to do that. You either get one or the other people come to you not having done anything or they come to you sort of halfway through things and then you have to sort yeah. of try and unravel it a little bit for them. And so I'd say, um, you know, if you are thinking of starting anything or you are just starting, just get some advice and make sure what you're doing is is correct. Um, yeah. And I think people don't realize, I had a lady the other day, she's a photographer and she bought a load of expensive equipment, you know, some cameras and backdrops and things like that couple of months before she started trading and she said oh I've done my first year tax return um but I didn't claim for those because I bought them too early and I was like well, you mm -hmm. can claim for them so people don't realize things like just like a pre-trading expense simple yeah things like that it can all be unraveled and sorted but but I think yeah I just say, sort of say to people just you know get some advice you know from from an accountant or a bookkeeper or whoever just before you start make sure you're on the right track yeah yeah and I think um I've, uh, it, it takes me back to one of my favorite sayings is um, opinions are like belly buttons. Everyone has one, but they're all useless. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's, it takes it back that you talk about the, the pub is the classic scenario of where someone will go and ask someone over a conversation, over a, a drink, and they give them their opinion. And actually, like you said, with the limited company, it's like, 
that probably wasn't the best way. So you need to ask someone in the know, definitely. Yeah. Um, Chris has just said about, um, can you claim back credit card charges? So he's got an iZettle card machine and uses for clients to pay by card. And he's charged 1.75% for each transaction and there's no other charges. So can he put that through as part of his yeah. expenses? Yeah, absolutely, he can. Wonderful, wonderful. Excellent. So that's answered that question for you, Chris. Yes, that definitely can. Um, the team have also put up the website. So we've got www.waveapps.com. So we can go and have a look through on that one later as well. Um, that's brilliant. That's covered that side of things. Um, one thing I know we haven't put it into the question, but one thing that I know has come up recently and people are starting to become aware of this is the tax going digital. Mm. And I read something the other day that said about actually um, it's not just going to affect at the moment it's businesses that are VAT registered, but it's going to come across to self-employed people as well. And you're going to have to record information monthly. But um, we were wondering how is that going to work with then doing tax returns and things like that and, and paying your tax? Will, will it switch over or and how would that work with working with your accountant? Um, I think prob um, I don't know what probably people that run the business probably don't necessarily think it's a good thing because they've got another job to do. But I mean, I, I think it's it's not a bad idea because it, it, get, it certainly will get people organised and they'll be, you know, they'll be forced to do their accounts each month. Um, I'd say how, you know, with, with paying the tax at the end of the year, it won't work any different. It would just mean you'll be doing your accounts monthly instead of, you know, in one go at the end of the year. So, you know, when somebody like me comes to get the accounts, the 12 months are already on there rather than probably a mad scramble at the end of the year. Um, but yeah, I say it's still, they haven't released too many details of it, of it yet. But, okay. you know, I think, I think it would just be a matter of, it'll be a bit of a hassle for the people that have got to do it. Um, yeah. but they're just getting organized like I said earlier get organized and, and get things done and I think most people will be okay it's you know it's one Brilliant. of those things, I, I, I think yeah, no, I think that's kind of that's kind of clarified that. And sorry, I know I sprung that one on you a little bit, but <laughs> it was some someone had asked me the other day when it came through, and I was like, well, actually, I can ask Jane that when she comes on what yeah. her thoughts and, and where she is with it. So that's brilliant. Thank you. Um, and I think the main thing will be that people know that, oh, yes, they're going to file everything monthly. It's going to be done um, at year end pay, payment wise and everything as normal. So. Um, Someone's just emailed through with a question around, um, can I put training courses through? I'm a beautician. Yeah, they can all go on as well. Yeah. Wonderful. So keep, the, keep the receipts, obviously, but they can all go through, yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, and Chris has just said, Fab, thank you. Sorry for all the questions. No, Chris, that's what we want. We want people to ask questions. So that's brilliant. Um, but when should you register as a sole trader with HMRC? Um, right. I, I mean, I get regis people registered, you know, fairly quickly. Um, but the deadline is the 5th of October of your second year of trading. <laughs> Brilliant. Fantastic. So 5th of October for second year trading is the yeah. official deadline. Yeah. But you would say it's better to do it as soon as you as soon as possible. So it's done and out the way. Yeah. Well, so you, you registered and, you know, as well. I mean, I do, I do it because I get people registered. You get there. UTR, I get get myself set up as an agent that what I was talking about before, I can deal with the revenue and then everything's ready to go. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so what top three tips would you give to anyone starting a business based on your own experience and or around accountancy side of things? Um, I think from a personal point of view, when, when I set up, it was quite slow going at first. And I, I remember people saying to me, don't get disheartened. It will work and you will get clients and, you know, it will come. But don't get disheartened at first when when it takes a while. And I think that's probably the one thing I would say to people. Um, you know, I'm sure they're all everybody out there's doing a brilliant job and you've got brilliant products. But, you know, it does take time. But once sort of I think once the word of mouth sort of, you know, starts happening and um, people, you know, know someone else, know somebody else. And, and I found I've got probably more clients that way than I have for actual advertising or, or paid advertising I've done. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I think I've done personally, again, I did quite a lot of networking, just talking to sort of anybody I can. I mean, I was quite lucky. I did quite a lot over lockdown. I did a lot over Zoom. So I didn't have to travel, you know, everywhere, which saved a lot of time. So um, and I've used Facebook a lot. There's some quite good. Um, there's a Facebook group called BCP Connect. Um, that's quite good. That's worth joining. That's um, I think they've got about 1500 members on there. They've got a lot of local businesses wow. in this area. That's really worth having a look yeah. at. Um, and, you know, just sort of local, local. I mean, I live over in Broadstone. There's a couple of groups sort of Broadstone, Corf, Mullin, Facebook groups, which I've joined as well. And, you know, sort of people are always looking for accountants on there. So I think it's just, you know, don't give up. Just keep plugging away and, you know, it will come. Um, and then I think also, as, as I sort of obviously already covered, um, you know, from an accountancy point of view and that, just get a bit of advice to start with. Make sure you're on the right track um and yeah just keep going i think <laughs> brilliant brilliant and if we've got anyone that wants um accountancy support or advice um come and have a chat with us drop us through an email and the only reason i'm suggesting that first is because i don't want jane to be sw over swamped with loads of people going can i sit down and have a chat with you please jane so mm -hmm. um if you've got concerns or questions drop an initial question through to jane which will share email addresses or if you want a bit more of a long-term advice come and ask us at sammy charity and we can always then have a chat with jane see what her diary is like and see if we could maybe arrange um, a conversation for you so that we can just monitor that Jane's not getting overwhelmed with with lots of people wanting to sit down and have conversations. Um, we had another um, question come through um, on the emails. Can you explain what HMRC considered to be test trading period for someone starting up? So kind of their test research, the pre-trading period, uh, period where they're going to kind of test test the market and see how they get on. What I don't quite understand the question. What What do you mean? What like but to claim like a pre trading expense? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I think I think that. And what they're also talking about is um, what do they consider? So if I'm starting today and I'm going to um, start researching, I'm going to start exploring the market, putting a couple of things out there, see how they do doing some research and, and I'm kind of going right. I'm testing the waters. I'm not necessarily trading, but I'm doing that test section before i launch and trade is there kind of a particular time frame that they would say okay you can only test trade for this long you can only test the waters for this long or is it is there no particular time frame on that not aware of any time scales the, the only thing is there's like a small a sort of small traders exemption so if you earn the profits are under a thousand pound a year um mm. to report that on the tax return so i guess you yeah. could do you trade it you know your test trading under that um you know and then you wouldn't need to obviously report that or pay any tax on that yeah brilliant brilliant i think that answers that question and that's definitely what um what they're looking for so um michael's come in with a question um can accountants also deal with companies house or would you just supply figures for the directors to input yeah, no, so accountants normally deal with everything um, for a for company's house. So what they normally do, if it's a limit, limited company, you would do the accounts, do the tax return, you'd submit um, the accounts to company's house, and then you also submit the tax return um, and a set of accounts to HMRC. That's normally all part of the package. Um, and then right. the only other thing um, with company's house, um, you've got an annual confirmation statement um, to file Either in a, I, you know, I can do that or um, they can do that themselves. That's just sort of saying if directors have changed, shareholdings have changed. Um, and then the only other time generally you'd need to deal with companies' houses if shares were issued, shareholdings were changed, a director changed, um, that sort of thing. So um, accountants normally deal with that. Um, on, Brilliant. On that so you get, again, um, you get a code from um, company's house. So you can like log in electronically. So if you just give that over to your accountant, they can do everything for you. That's good. That's good. Brilliant. Fantastic. So that's great. We've had some great questions that are coming in. If anyone's got uh, any more questions they want to ask, then pop them on to there. Um, let us know that you are getting value in the comments. I'm sure you are. We've had lots and lots of information and things to take away. And let us know what's been your biggest takeaway or all the information for you so far. Um, 
<laughs> Michael said, you're hired, have a heart attack every year, he hates it. So, so yeah, so I think there are some very pleased people hearing that, you know, if they decide to take that step and invest in um, having an accountant on board, which um, accountancy fees, I'm sure Jane is gonna, gonna agree with me or correct me, but I'm pretty sure the accountancy fees will also go as part of the expense of the business anyway. So it's all taken into account. Um, and on top of that, being able to save them money, it's definitely worth the investment and saving the headache. So, so yeah, so that's good to hear. So. I think one of the questions I like to ask as we, we kind of come towards the, the end of the interview is, um, and this can be either about accountancy, but personally with career because of starting your own business and the journey you've taken. If you were to travel back to your younger self, knowing what you know now, what would you say and what would be your best advice that you would give you? Yeah. you know, I was thinking about this question and I thought, shall I say I would have gone self-employed earlier but then I thought well if I had have done I wouldn't have the experience that I've got now I wouldn't have worked for all the different practices and then I wouldn't have worked in industry and like so I can see it from an accountant's point of view but also from sort of the entrepreneur's point of view as well so I think maybe I would have gone self-employed a couple of years earlier but I don't think I would change a lot because so I've enjoyed what I've done I've worked for loads of different companies and met loads of people and you know it's, it's been good so yeah, probably I wouldn't change much to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And any 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 final thoughts that you would like to add in regard regarding accountancy, tax, or, or business, or anything else at all? I think I think I'd just sort of say to people, you know, we I mean with COVID and that, we don't know quite where it's going to go, do we? Over the next few months, I mean, hopefully it won't be as bad as everyone's sort of saying. But I think to say to everyone, just you know keep going look after each other and you know we're, we're probably all small businesses on here so you know help each other out recommend each other and um just keep going if don't get disheartened you know if we get another small lockdown or something keep going because you're probably doing absolutely brilliantly um yeah and you know and, and also any questions if i can help anyone that you know any anything at all just you know take a bricky a, a message or something and i'll do my best to help Brilliant, brilliant. We've just had one from Lorraine that's going to be um, a good question that I know she's kind of had on her mind a little bit. So they're in the process of becoming a tra charitable incorporated organisation, CIO. Um, should they try to find an accountancy firm that specialises in handling charities or will any accountant have the necessary knowledge? I would probably say in that that one try and find a firm that's got the um experience because that is quite a specialized area that's not really something i would do um if you want me to sort of i know a couple of other accountants so if you want me to sort of ask around and see if i can find someone that's recommended i can do that for you if, if you you know let me know a couple more details quite happy to do that but yeah so it's quite specialized that so brilliant that would be fantastic so what we'll do lorraine um i think that's kind of answered the question for you but there may be more of an answer to come to there so in a moment i will pop jane's email address up lorraine if you want to drop an email through to um jane or if you want to email through to myself and i'll pass it on to jane um, and we can maybe find out a bit more information for you for that one um so Lorena said cheers for that and chris has said thanks jane really appreciated some great advice by the way, do you need a website? Um, so <laughs> Chris is asking about the website. So I'm sure um, if Jane needs a website, she'll be let's say, asking us, you know, who do you know that can um, can help with that? But I know that you have already got one, which we'll, we'll share at the end as well. Um, so yeah, so I think that has kind of covered everything that we wanted to ask and that's covered everything that other people wanted to ask. Um, it has been a great session this week and it's been very informative and I know it's answered some questions for our viewers that have had on their mind and some common tax accountancy questions that we get asked as well all the time so there so there's so it's covered some really really good information there Jane um, so I want to say thank you very much for your time and coming on to support us um, it's been absolutely brilliant and time is the most valuable thing um, so thank you for that um, Lorraine is also saying so they will start to come in with them now uh, Lorraine is saying another great den session thanks a million guys so 
um so it's been very supported um we are back next week again um we will be back with another session with a different person as well um so we'll have um, a great session again next week i'm sure um in the meantime that's a thank you very much to jane and a goodbye from me and from jane bye thank you lovely to meet you all <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you ever so much. And we will see everyone again next week. Have a good weekend and enjoy the week.